Hi folks, it's Aiden Crypto Group speaking. Welcome to today's Friday webinar. Today I'm going to show you a couple of charts, actually three main charts that I wanted to make sure that you are fully aware of and understand, uh, well, in case you meet and face potential headwinds from the market, from the risks of a recession, which, which were not kind of like evaporated, they are still there, and what to do, how to prepare for your portfolio management insights, which market side to choose, the bulls or the bears. If you're ready to hear that, make sure to stay tuned. We're going there right in a second. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, it's Adrian Cryptoburp. Straight beautiful greetings from Switzerland, sunny, sunny mountainside of the Switzerland. And your likes, pretty, pretty amazing uh, village spot. And uh, well, just heading straight to the merit. I wanted to give you a deeper understanding of, uh, of three main charts that I kind of like think are critical and essential for many traders and investors to understand the current situation on the market and intermarket analysis uh, perspectives, right? So let's study uh, the very first chart. So here we're looking at the consumer uh, discretionary ratio, relative strength ratio on consumer discretionary versus consumer st uh, staples, right? So this kind of like a relative strength ratio remains or relies on, on the principle of momentum, right? Because by defining which, la which asset leads uh, one, you know, another or which one lags behind another, it's essential to understand to, you know, the comparison, the actual direct ratio of the securities prices, right? So the relative strength ratio is not the relative strength index. It's not the RSI. The relative strength ratio tells you about the relative forces, uh, the leaders and the laggards, right? When comparing two different assets uh, prices and by understanding which one inclines of another, which one out outperforms or underperforms, well, this directly comes and is combined with the momentum principle. The momentum principle suggests that outperforming assets will continue to outperform and the underperforming assets will continue to out underperform. So this kind of like inclines this, um, this momentum persistence, right? This persistence of, uh, and the tendency of a trend to continue in the direction of the breakout, right? This, this kind of like a set of money moving in one direction or another. And uh, well, just looking at this chart, you know, the right hand side, we're looking at the relative strength ratio, which has been inclining over the past couple of uh, weeks, if you will, ever since we started 2023, right? So ever since, again, 2023 turned, uh, well, turned up, we are looking at the significant market rotation. And this market rotation tells me that if the consumer discretionary, which is the, um, the representation of the um, cyclical stocks of the S&P 500, uh, tell me, you know, that this consumer, consumers kind of like, you know, upon the discretion, they feel more certain about buying uh, something that otherwise they would not be able to afford, right? Uh, some, some, some goods outside of their basic necessities. When the, this tells me that this gives them a little bit of more optimism uh, while looking into the future, right? So this significant breakout over the 200-day trend basically uh, tells you two things. First of all, it tells you that there has been a significant trend shift on the technical side of the things, right? Technical, uh, because technical analysis suggests what's happening inside of the market uh, and is trying to get us a better understanding of the relationship between the investors and between the traders who often are subjects uh, to behavioral biases on the emotional and cognitive side. So while looking at the market rotation, kind of like, you know, XLI versus XLP uh, ratio, relative strength ratio, pressing and breaking over 200-day trend, it tells me, again, that there has been this significant shift allowing for this winning side uh, for the consumer discretionary to kind of like take a lead over the main price barrier. And this is not just kind of like some random price barrier that is, that is uh, well, just a, kind of like a cheap, you know, cheap um, trick that you could ignore, right? We're talking about the long-term trend. And while talking about long-term trend, every single breakout happens once in a while. Those are not often, um, you know, those are not the situations that you often see those major breakouts and turns in the market from the long-term perspective. So, because there are many, there are not many of them, there are actually few of them, you do have to pay more attention to those um, because they, they represent those significant shifts and significant changes. So the fact that the market rotated higher above the 200-day trend is bullish on its own. It's telling me that the old bearish declining tendency has been broken, right? This is an early stage informing us about the potential bull market start. Uh, and this, is, this chart actually confirms that the risk on the environment represented by the XLY 
is actually taking the lead over the risk off. So ever since 2023 started, we're looking at the significant change and shift in the trader's perspective uh, and, and the way that they see uh, the future into 2023, right? Because each and every single security price move uh, represents or discounts what the traders believe uh, for the future to hold, right? Those are not kind of like the actual and current stages or states, uh, status of, of the market. It actually represents and discounts now, uh, the traders' anticipations, the traders' desires and hopes for what the future looks like. So, you know, taking taking advantage of that and taking, taking it into account, we may tell that there has not only been a breakout, but this breakout seems to be holding this 200-day trend, respecting this freshly broken tendency, as it, first of all, uh, has also started to change the slope of the curve. So this significant slowdown, slowdown of the entire 2022 dominant tendency of declines you know, has been broken, it remains and follows through so far, um, you know, above and floats above this 200-day trend support, if you will, this relative strength um, support ratio of 2.4, uh, 2.04, 2.02. Uh, by approximation, we can assume it's 2.0, basically. However, you know, it's uh, it's not a directly tradable chart the way, the way we're looking at it right now. So the technical analysis use of or the utility of the RAM numbers is probably a little bit limited. One way or another, there's significant change away from the risk off and towards the risk on. Now, this is a bullish setup that can find a confirmation in many other charts as well. So here's another instance, right? We're talking about Bitcoin USDT perpetual contract on Bybit on the 12-hour chart. This is my second chart that I wanted to kind of like introduce to you today and walk you through a little bit. Bitcoin is right now pushing and pressing above over $24,000 following the yesterday's kind of like rejection of the 25 $25,000 region just takes us back to the uh, 2022 August highs, which marked the bear market rally peak. Okay, this is where the bear market rally exhausted for Bitcoin. But never since price action wise, this level, this area, you know, has remained significant in the eyes of the traders, which finds confirmation in the yesterday's sell off around those regions. On another note, we also got, you know, at around the peakish numbers, we also got the PPI prints, which were basically overshot, right? The estimations uh, were uh, lower than the actual real results that we got. So the market reaction typically kind of like came up with a disappointment, you know, and traders do chose to sell, uh, sell off basically over uh, holding or buying. This is what explains the, the actual such a strong price decline from 25,200 all the way to 23,500 also. Right, so it's kind of like you know, two two thousand dollars a significant significant pullback, significant setback after the Powell for break, right? Because we got this significant shift at sixty nine hundreds, which is why I kind of like admitted also publicly on Twitter for opening the position, you know, and there and that was riding along with the trend uh, on the trend following principle basis, along with the high temper trailer indicator of the Burbigator Pro. Then kind of like, you know, got stopped at a little bit of a chop, uh, 22,800s. And uh, then Bitcoin kind of like nuked, you know, just a little bit below the critical support of 22,300 and just rallied back above it with a very significant breakout confirmation over the past resistance of $24,000, right? So we kind of actually follow through uh, on to the upside with a successful break. And even though we had a little bit of a headwinds from the overhead resistance of twenty to uh, at twenty five thousand dollars, additionally empowered, which additionally was empowered by the bearish PPI prints, uh, this altogether kind of like came back to height inside the previous range. So we can look at it twofold. First of all, it's it's bullish that we made a higher high. It's bullish that we basically continued to persist higher. It's bullish that we closed above the previous resistance uh, region of twenty four uh, three hundred area. It's uh, it's also bullish because we followed through on another day uh, basis following right after, uh, and it's not bullish. It's rather bearish that we kind of like formed this overthrow peak. Until we see a follow through higher above this overthrow peak, well, this tells me that there's that there is a significant risk of a local reversal, right? Because even though if Bitcoin kind of like just gets and respects the twenty four thousand dollars support, the chances are this kind of like outstanding week, this long upper shadow of the candle or this outside bar, if you will, uh, bearish engulfing pattern, whatever you frame that. Well, this may take us a little bit longer to recover, right, for the bulls, because typically when you see a failed pattern, failed breakout, you know, it kind of like has this inclined, uh, an implied tendency to revert stronger in the opposite direction than the breakout itself 
occur, right? So it tends to perform better in the opposite direction. So the upwards breakout technically is supposed to kind of like set you up for a bullish continuation. However, if there is a negative surprise and there's actually price uh, of the security just declines below the freshly created support level, uh, then this kind of like only validates the selling side of the market, right? This confirms that everybody who bought on the breakout notice basically are now trapped and are, are in the losing position, right? So their loss aversion is most likely going to kind of like, again, hold them, uh, make them hold onto their losses. And at the same time, by doing that, you know, eventually they may face the risk of liquidation, which may in additionally empower uh, the sell of rally as they are forced to cover for their positions and they're uh, kind of like, you know, just and forced to do so. As a result, you know, those prices tend to perform better in the opposite direction, which is to the downside in this case, right? So I would argue that this entire case locally is bullish. However, this local PPI print uh, induced sell of candle that we would that we would see yesterday, you know, needs to be reclaimed as soon as possible, basically in order for us to continue uh, higher towards the tw uh, twenty eight thirty thousand dollar region. And I do think so uh, that it's that it's kind of like likely. It's not unlikely that we get there. Right, the bullish conditions are there. Like I said, we're looking at significant uh, support from the intermarket analysis, just like we discussed the XLY versus the XLP ratio, telling that there is an overall market rotation away from the risk off and towards the risk on. This is potentially bullish, right? This lays a potential bullish setup for Bitcoin as well to ascend. So having the the overall you know tailwinds from the market itself, right, uh, and from many other markets, I would argue that again. This local, local kind of like a gimmick local failure that we got on the peak, you know, may uh, hold us back a little bit from breaking higher. However, the sooner it gets broken uh, and closed above the previous area of the weakness of around twenty-five thousand dollars, you know, this may set us up well, nicely for a potential continuation higher. Other than this, again, because of the failed pattern existence, this failed breakout may. Um, kind of like stop us here for a moment and turn us back inside for the area inside the range uh, that we just escaped. And uh, well, eventually in the very up in the very negative case, and may of course turn this huge sideways pattern into more of a distribution nature. Uh, however, unlikely that would you know. However, that would sound um, if I were to speculate, if I were to bet my, uh, if I were to place my bets, I would argue that. This is rather bullish oriented. This is rather ups up, upside and upward oriented. Um, and the reasons are, of course, that this significant breakout, you know, from 6900s comes from very constructive perspective, comes from very, comes as a very constructive chart pattern uh, breakout, right? There's a very strong momentum pressing higher, which was unseen ever since 2021 uh, end, right? This was not present for the entirety of the bear market. So this tells me again that there has been a significant shift. The market rotation is real. And even though we are looking at an early stage and an infant stage of what I would refer to this way, uh, of bull market, the rotation has shifted, the forces have shifted. So uh, trading counter the trend, you know, typically brings negative results or un underperforms trading and following along with the trend, just trading along with the trend. Following the trend is what yields the best returns. And finally, this is the third chart that I actually just printed up for you. And this is, represents Ethereum USDT pair for perpetual contract on Bybit on the daily time frame. And what we're looking at is a 200-day baseline, right? So, so the 200-day baseline uh, coming from the Burbicator Pro telling and respecting all the recent fluctuations and basically telling you that the current support level is around uh, for Ethereum is kind of like it just continues to consolidate locally in the area of the previous resistance of around uh, 1700s, you know, from uh, late October, early November last year, right? So, so we're kind of like just right now, uh, well, we made the higher high, which is bullish on its own. However, we did not manage to reclaim those areas because the only kind of like candle parts and factors standing out outside of this area, the highs, uh, are represented by the wicks, by the upper shadow. So again, those those represent those local kind of like pattern failures, right? So if I would argue, uh, if I were to, well, place my bets, you know, we're kind of like consolidating in a bullish mode. The bullish mode has been flashed by the Burbicator Pro here in the trend following basis, right? So there has been a significant trend breakout overall, not only from the price action point of view, so we kind of like brought the, uh, broke the highs of uh, 1350, which uh, which so far has been respected and is held pretty nicely, 
right? And Ethereum, all despite all of those difficulties, all of those technical uh, headwinds that we're looking at, is basically consolidating, right? So it's not rejecting the highs. Uh, it's kind of like rejecting the situation to go back below the average. This is bullish. It's holding this. Um, it's holding this this overall bullish setup. I would argue, right? So significant bullish breakout has been a fact. Right now, we made new highs, which is bullish as well on its own. The inclining 200-day baseline average is another reason for us to believe that Ethereum USD on the daily chart is supposed to rather incline than decline this kind of like a situation of a of a chart pattern framing um framed and formed between uh 1500 and 1700 is rather a matter of a pit stop and a matter of reaccumulation if you will until until it breaks higher right so all the things concerned all the things concerned i would argue that uh, ethereum is facing a big bullish setup and a big uh change in opportunity as the market rotates potentially higher. Of course, 2023 is known to be the pre-election year and the pre-election years have been historically the strongest performers uh, within any years of the presidential cycle ever since 1939, right? So the 84-year history basically records only one losing year for anyone who invested in the pre-elections. We have the bullish tendency. We have the bullish market rotation. We have everything it needs in terms of the structural requirements for the market to go up. Uh, the only thing that is kind of like you know, having and posing those those headwinds is from the economy itself. The business cycle is still in the contraction mode. The inverted yield curve situation is uh, not so much promising because each and every single time the recession came up, the signal prior to the recession happened to be the inverted yield curve. And right now we are looking at the deepest yield curve inversion since 1980s. So it's not so much of a uh, of a bullish territory for the business. It seems that there are still you know, the, the, the business cycle is still not out of the woods and there are potentially more contractions coming up. We keep seeing that this inflation rates, as in the CPI or the PPI, you know, keep coming up um, overestimated, right? And, and then this definitely brings the necessity for further rate hikes, which has the, which had also been announced by, by, the, uh, by the chairman, Jay, Jay Powell. So all the things concerned, you know, uh, we have the situation that the economy is kind of like, you know, in the contraction mode, most likely, or at least, you know, still facing the significant and essential risks of contracting better and slowing down uh, while the market has started improving. It's, it's just escaped the bear market and kind of like started improving and inclining. So we have this con counter, um, counter, you know, directional situation. The market wants to go up. The economy kind of like is being held back with the significant risks of recession as the inverted yield curve represents well inevitably so if you imagine the sine curve kind of like to represent the business or, or the financial market cycle right the upturns and the downturns the peaks and the truths in the markets imagine we have just kind of like inverted to the upside then the economy which is this kind of like a different different curve let's say let's say give it here it would it will follow it will follow the market with a lag of six to nine months so this is what it will kind of like look like for the uh, for the business cycle. Each peak in each trough is kind of like distant on the timeline by six to nine months, right? So six to nine months of luck is basically what we're looking at right now. And uh, the good thing is that because the market has already turned up in most of the cases, this is what, te what, this is what technically uh, takes the business cycle out of the recession or out of the contraction and it's kind of like just lets the economy improve. So uh, after some couple of months potentially of maybe more chop or maybe kind of like not the fully unleashed bull market, if you will, uh, the bullish odds are still there, right? And I would anticipate that the quarter four, that the fourth quarter, uh, as, as that the second half of the year and especially the fourth quarter, um, seasonality patterns are going to be winning and uh, giving the opportunity for the bulls, for the bears, to, uh, for the bulls to take over uh, and get fully unleashed and for the bears to kind of like hide back in a cage, hide back in a, in a cave. Hope it makes sense. I would try. I was trying to picture that best I could for you. And before I go, uh, please know that we have this uh, excellent deal going on. And um, as our partners with Bybit, uh, just offer the giveaway, you know, as simple as that. So by following the tweet that I actually had pinned on my Twitter account, if you go to my Twitter account at crypto underscore burp, B-R-B, you can go and apply for a giveaway. And we're giving away um, an iPhone 14 worth uh, $799, right? So it's almost $800. And 
And this is a real giveaway. This is a real offer. This is a real product. And this is sponsored by Bybit. As simple as that, if you want to win the iPhone 14 worth almost $800 to be eligible for that, you just have to follow a set of very simple steps. Some, something just like, like share, um, like and retweet that tweet, register and deposit minimum $100 with this special ref link that we have that, that allows us to track the deposits and uh, comment win, just like many people already did. All right, so it's as simple as that. And soon, hopefully soon, we're going to be able to pick up the winner and this iPhone 14 fruit of beautifully newly designed and sponsored by, uh, by Bybit, you know, is going to potentially reach your hands. If you want to go take part in this iPhone giveaway, make sure you go and follow my Twitter account. Go ahead and follow the steps like retweet, register deposit minimum $100 with the link mentioned in the tweet and comment win. As simple as that may take you perhaps five minutes or even less than five minutes, giving you a chance to earn, uh, well, iPhone 14, brand new. I hope it makes sense. God bless you all, guys. See you around, and I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.